Hello everybody, how are you doing today on this magnificent day? I hope you're doing well. This is the weekly groceries yet again with your host, me. <laughs> and we talk about life. We talk about how to grow the garden of our lives together. Just in case you're new here and you're not familiar with what's going on or who I am, welcome to this space. Uh, I deliver you uh, weekly messages, uh, food for thought, food for heart, food for your soul to help you grow as a person and so we can chit chat about things that are meaningful to us. So please introduce yourself in the comments and as per usual, let me know how you are, how your week has been. I like it when people share with me actually little random insights that they've had or things they've recently learned because it, it uh, kind of contributes to my own insights as well. Um, giving me more things to expand on, more things to think about. So if you've learned anything lately that is a value that you've kind of recently had a download about, some sort of spiritual insight that really clicked for you this week, or something that you've just accomplished this week that you want to share, let's spread these good vibes. You know, I kind of imagine it as, because uh, we're growing the garden of our lives together on this channel, growing alongside each other, I kind of imagine that as being our organic natural fertilizer is we we cultivate the beautiful and nutritious conditions for us all to grow alongside each other by sprinkling on our own little winds our own little um uh, vibe vibrations that we cultivate in our own inner world so that we can then spread that to other people so that's kind of like our own natural fertilizer is sharing with each other the good things the good energy that we cultivate for ourselves so let me know how you are and what you're doing and your insights that you're gaining and right now I am about to check out the hotel that I'm in in Sharm el Sheikh Egypt as you can see it's very deserty behind me and today I would like to I would like to talk about restorative self-care and how to fill up your own cup which is a topic that I talk about quite predominantly on my channel I would say how to really fill yourself up with love and that's really at the core essence of my my channel and what I share and what I hope to transmit is helping you connect more to your inner pool of self-love now last week on the weekly grocery we, we talked about um, the osmosis of love the osmosis of joy and really how to open your heart more and I feel like a big aspect of being able to open your heart is the prerequisite is that you're taking care of yourself firstly you are able to nourish yourself and nurture yourself so that you are full of that inner pool of love to then share with other people now how do we start actually doing that and why i want to talk about that this week is because lately i've been feeling very relaxed i've been feeling very relaxed obviously i'm on like a holiday right now i'm traveling which is where i feel in my element but it's also a process of really getting to understand myself more and a big part of uh, engaging in restorative self-care is knowing what you like knowing what you enjoy knowing what actually recharges you and replenishes you because for me for example and I'm going to share some ways that you can restore yourself and how to actually go about doing this but for me it's gonna look different to how it looks to you like you might really enjoy for example really uh, high adrenaline junky activities that might be something that actually ref refuels you makes you feel more alive makes you feel more vibrant um, that might actually be a form of self-care to you because it's something that you might love doing let's say you love zip lining for example I know it's a very wacky example but some of you might really enjoy doing that but it's really about getting to know yourself on a deeper level and creating that intimacy with yourself so that you you know what you gravitate towards you know what energizes you you know also what depletes you so you don't want to engage in those things as well and really getting to delineate what is right for you, what feels good to you, what actually regenerates your soul is ultimately what's going to help you care for yourself more because you're listening to your own internal needs and your internal needs are very unique to you. Obviously we have the universal principle of, um, oh by the way I forgot to give you a drink. Today the beverage is just water because I'm in desert so that's the only thing I really want to drink at the moment. Mm. Mm. So there's your water. I know, I know it's not the best beverage I can offer you, but it's also you know the foundation of all drinks is water. So we can at least appreciate that. And if I'm not going to give you water, then oh no, I was going to give you a date. 
I was going to give you a, a chocolate coated date with a almond in the middle, but my bag is at reception. So you can just pretend, even though that's what you're going to do anyway, because you know, we're, we're communicating through a screen. So just imagine on the astral realms right now that I am giving you a chocolate covered date and that you're receiving it, even if it's not existing in material form, it exists as a pleasure pleasurable thing in your mind within the astral realms but anyways I can't give you that at the moment I'm sorry um, but get comfortable anyways kick your feet up have a nice snack um, maybe make a cup of tea um, and this is this could be your form of self-care for me for example I really love watching when I have when I have more free time and I actually feel like doing that I love watching YouTube videos about spirituality and about these kinds of ideas that help me refuel and uh, enliven my own thought processes and my own ideas. So that's something that I genuinely find incredibly comforting is, and that's what I was doing a lot during lockdown when I was living alone in Manchester, is I would just spend so much time watching YouTube, but it wasn't like binging on really random YouTube videos about, I don't know, um, black holes and eggs and random things like that. It was more so, um, things that felt productive to me, things that, not necessarily productive, but things that felt replenishing to me, like it was intellectual content that I could actually start um, learning about and finding out more about. So that's something that I find very rejuvenating. But I'm gonna split this into, because I was thinking about this yesterday, I'm gonna split this into two categories of restorative self-care and filling up your own cup. There's the recharging and resting and relaxing segment of it, and then there's a rejuvenating, enlivening segment of it. Things that actually uh, replenish you and really make you feel more vibrant, more energized, and things that actually calm down your nervous system, make you feel more at peace, stop the, the, the non-stop clutter in your mind and actually help you become more meditative in the way that you live your life. And because I'm on holiday right now, I've really been engaging in more so the recharging, the resting uh, aspect of it, which to me is quite a feminine thing to be able to just relax, do nothing, and really enjoy doing fuck all, which I'll be perfectly honest with you, that's something that I really enjoy doing, is being able to do nothing. Like my my sweet spot, and the way that I've really gained intimacy with myself by learning who I am and what I like, is understanding that I feel most at home, I feel most calm, re 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 recharged, and rested, and relaxed, when I am out in nature, and I'm just able to do nothing. And there's no schedule required of me. There's no one telling me what to do. I'm not confined to like a work schedule or a routine. It's just me really feeling totally like there's no rush. There's no pay, there's no, sorry, there's a loud noise that's gone and started over there. But it's okay, because part of meditation is being able to accept all things, even in spite of, you know, uh, what you previously may have considered to be annoying or unpreferable. It's about integrating all of it and trying to introduce a sense of okayness into all of it. So we're going to accept that there is a whizzing noise in the background and in fact I'm going to tell you right now that I quite enjoy white noise. Like I, if I'm really struggling to sleep I will listen to hair dryer noises. There's like a playlist on Spotify that's called hair dryer noises for babies so I put that on sometimes and also I really like the sound of vacuum cleaners. If you can resonate with that please let me know in the comments because I know that other people, there are other people out there that also like to listen to white noise. Whether it's like a fan like I left the air conditioning on yesterday because I just really like the noise. Um, vacuums, because it reminds me of when my mum would be vacuuming the house. Um, and also hair dryers, because I remember when my mum would be hair drying her hair. Um, and it would remind me of just being tucked up in bed while she's getting ready for work and I'm just there all snuggly. Um, and I'd hear her drying her hair. So it's quite, a, it's quite a soothing noise for me. So that's something that also I find to be part of my self-care routine is listening to hair dryer noises and vacuum cleaners. But anyways, we've gone completely off topic. I got distracted by the noise. I'm actually really hyper right now, I've just realized. And it's because I, this is a form of self-care for me, is speaking to you on the camera, uh, transmitting my ideas and thinking about ideas. So that's why I was thinking about this topic. I was thinking about this topic because I, I found that uh, when I went to the beach the other day, and I was just chilling on the beach. I was going in and out of the water. I find that to be super replenishing. Again, it's what I was talking about, the feminine principle of allowing yourself to do nothing, being okay with doing nothing, not really feeling like you need to do anything. And that's when I find in those spaces where I'm just 
resting my nervous system, connecting more to my breath, enjoying beauty, enjoying being in the water, which is just one thing that I find very replenishing uh, and comforting for me. Um, I find that that's when my best ideas come through. That's when all these ideas start coming through because I'm allowing myself the free time and the space and the, the expansive container for these creative ideas and things that I want to share with you to drop in. And that's also how you can connect to your creativity. So in terms of these two categories of recharging and resting and enlivening and rejuvenating, you've got to really get close to yourself and spend more time alone, to be honest, to find out what is it that you like doing when you're not distracting yourself with um, lower vibrational activities, for example, like um, just, I don't know, binge watching TV or, because you might like that, but it's also not something that may help you actually connect more to yourself. It might be something that actually helps you to drown out of your thoughts and feelings, which is why for example, people like watching TV is because you switch off your mind and you're plugged into the consciousness of whatever you're watching. So you don't have to think about yourself, you don't have to think about your problems, you're just watching this thing. And you might like doing that, there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you don't judge yourself for doing it. But what are the things that actually light up your soul? Does watching TV light up your soul? If that's a yes, good for you. But you've got to really create that intimacy with yourself to know what is something that really calms me down, brings me back home to myself, makes me feel more at peace with myself or what is something that actually enriches me allows me to be a more expanded version of myself and I call all of these things that we do for self-care forms of immersion so when I'm immersing myself in nature like yesterday when I was going in and out of the water just swimming I really love swimming I'm not I'm not actually a great swimmer oh sorry there's something dripping on my leg um I'm not a great swimmer but I like to I know, I like to wade in the water. I like to feel how it feels on my skin. And I went snorkeling yesterday for the first time ever. Um, we went to Blue Hole in Dahab, Egypt, which apparently there's only two blue holes in the whole world, but it was really cool. It was a really fun experience. Um, so that's something else that I also find uh, very enlivening, very enriching, is immersing myself to new sensory stimuli and allowing that more adventurous and curious and um, active part of me to be felt by me to be to allow myself to lean into that because um, that's why I love travel it's something that allows me to expand myself it's something that rejuvenates me that enlivens me so what I would like you to do if you want to <laughs> is to reflect on what are those things that really either calm you down and really make you feel more at home with yourself or things that enliven you give you energy because for me, thinking of ideas creatively, and you might also resonate with this in a, in a creative sense, that when you do creative things, it's a form of therapy for you. Like when I'm creating content, when I'm doing this, and I'm focusing on transmitting my ideas and being creative about what I want to bring forth in the world and all these concepts and things that I want to build on. This is something that I find myself feeling like I have more energy when I'm doing it and after I've done it than before. Like it, it completely changes my state and I feel like that's a form of self-care for me to allow myself the time, putting aside lots of time to make sure that I'm doing these things. Because self-care is also linked to how much do you feel actually deserving of doing things that you want to do and things that are actually good for you, that you know are good for your heart, that are good for your body, that are good for your soul. So it's also a question of evaluating how worthy do you feel and how deserving do you feel of setting aside the time for healthy habits, for healthy practices, for things that you know is going to make you feel better. Like you know that it's probably gonna make you feel better to sit down and do that 15 minute guided meditation, for example. But do you allow yourself to go there? Do you allow yourself to do that? Do you allow yourself to, to go into that space where you know you're gonna change your state? Because sometimes when we are not being loving to ourselves, and we are stuck more in a low vibrational state, we're at a lower frequency where we're just feeling really blare, we're feeling really tired, we're just feeling kind of depleted and exhausted. That are the, those are the moments in which it's actually most important for you to step into the realms of self-care and immersion, which I'm gonna explain more about in a second. But those are the times where we also resist it as well. So I feel like when you 
build the habit and the consistency and the intimacy with yourself to say that, okay, I'm not feeling so great right now. I'm gonna go for a walk in nature. I'm gonna go for a swim. I'm gonna go uh, think about creative ideas. I'm gonna go listen to music. I'm gonna go immerse myself somewhere that I find to be very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. It's making that commitment and that vow to yourself that you are going to be there for yourself. It's like asking yourself essentially, what do you need right now? And how often do we do that? We are very willing to say to other people, like, what do you need right now? What can I do for you right now? How often do we actually ask ourselves and really tap into our own intuitive self and say, what do you need right now? Like asking your body, what would you like right now? Like yesterday, we had the opportunity to go out and uh, socialize with these people that we had met, um, but I wasn't feeling it. I, was, I, I tuned into my body and I was like, I'm really exhausted actually, I'm really tired. And I would actually rather, even though I see, I am quite an extroverted person usually, I just felt in that moment, I don't feel like doing that at all. And when you actually tap into yourself and you honor your own needs and you see yourself as worthy of listening to, you see your intuition as worthy of being valued and honored and respected, that is for a form of self-care you'll actually be doing yourself a massive favor because you're listening to what you need in that moment. And that, the thing about intimacy with yourself is that what you need from moment to moment is always changing. Today, you might feel really tired. You might actually need to rest. If that's you right now, you might need to just lie down. And even if you never have naps, have a nap. Allow yourself to do that. I was actually talking to my client ages ago and we were saying um, something about feeling really lazy for waking up late, which is something that I also used to feel as well. But that's also kind of a form of conditioning to say that if you're not waking up really early at 6 a.m., then you're not very productive and you're a very lazy person. And that's a form of self-judgment, actually. And who says you need to, unless you have something to attend to, like a, a job or something, who says you need to wake up really early? Have we not just been conditioned to believe that, oh, we're more productive, we're more contributing to society if we wake up early? But self-care is just really allowing yourself more, more freedom to do whatever you feel like doing, as long as you've got no hard commitments or responsibilities to attend to. It's about listening to yourself. So I'd always feel in the past quite guilty if, sorry, the, the uh, lighting is weird. There we go. I would always feel quite guilty if in the past I had a nap because I'd wake up just feeling like, oh, why did I do that? And once I woke up, once I came home from school, this was years ago, I came home from school and I had a nap. This is about 4 p.m. And I woke up at 9 p.m. And I went to the bathroom and I saw that it was nine. And I think it was like a digital clock instead of like a 24 hour clock. And I was like, oh my God, I'm late for school, it's, it's 9 a.m. I was freaking out, even though it was dark outside, but I was so disorientated from my nap that I just didn't even realize. But I thought I was late for school. I thought that it was nine in the morning. It was actually 9 p.m. So that was a really, that was a very confusing experience that I had with time and the distortion of time. But we're going completely off topic. But if you, for example, feel like your body, like ask your body right now, do you feel like you need a rest? Do you feel exhausted? Do you feel tired? Then listen to yourself. Don't keep working really hard or trying to complete things if you need a rest. That's self-care. That's honoring what you actually need in that moment. It's being willing to ask yourself, what do you need? And being self-loving enough to say, I'm actually gonna honor that need. I'm actually going to create time and space to fulfill that need to the best of my ability instead of denying yourself that. Because that's the time, that is the window in which actually destructive self, um, destructive habits and destructive practices, that's the window in which they can easily fall in if you do not feel worthy enough of actually taking care of yourself and your body and your mind. Because instead of doing something that's actually more fruitful for you, something that is re recharging or rejuvenating, you will slip into something that is actually regressing. I love that they all begin with like an RE, that was unintentional but it will, that's the space in which you're more likely to regress. Especially when you're in a low frequency state, you'll, you'll go to things for comfort. And those things that you go to out of comfort will actually be things that are not helping you expand as an individual, are not helping you become more open, more vibrant, but things that actually are depleting you. For example, that in that window, 
we might turn to food as a source of comfort and overeating. Or we might turn to overworking ourselves as a source of comfort to distract ourselves from actually taking the time to breathe, to relax, to be alone with our thoughts. Or you might use that window to smoke or drink or whatever these more, um, these more regressive things are you might easily fall back into that. And that's why, for example, I used to smoke cigarettes. That's why I used to drink as well. It's a form of kind of numbing, numbing yourself. And I'm not telling you that it's bad or wrong to do that. You, you have your own free will and I'm not here to place any judgment on you. I'm here to help you reflect on, you know, evaluating, is this self-loving? Is this leaning more towards the side of being self-loving? How can I lean more towards that? It's not about being rigid and being like, no, I'm only going to do these things that make me feel good all the time because we all have our crutches. You're human, you're human. And I really had to remind myself of that because I'd always feel really guilty, even though I was smoking the cigarettes and kind of using it as kind of a pleasurable thing to feel less anxious and to relax more, relax more. I would also feel simultaneously guilty about the fact that I was smoking. I was like, this is so bad for my body. I had to really understand where is that, what is this cigarette trying to satiate that I could actually replace with something that satiates me on a more deep, holistic and pure level in something that is leaning more towards what is self-loving. Not about shunning and shaming myself for regressing into something that I know is not of a very high frequency, but instead of moving more towards what is good. So instead of attacking this, and judging this and judging yourself for this let's say you start watching loads of netflix as a way to kind of distract yourself instead of attacking yourself for this you evaluate is this actually loving towards myself how can i move more towards something that's more loving instead of you know spending the whole day just sh show after show drowning yourself in this in this tv show knowing that actually this isn't making me feel any better it's just kind of making me feel really tired and groggy you say okay well to be self-caring is that, you know, maybe I watch a few episodes and I see, am I actually enjoying this? Is this actually making me laugh, for example? Or am I learning something from this? Or is this really allowing me to just, you know, chill out? And moving more towards the side of what is more self-loving? And so what I was saying about immersion is instead of immersing yourself in things that are making you feel more more tight in your body like smoking would make me feel like I'm less able to breathe more fully for example or procrastinating which makes you feel more sluggish it's about really replacing those lower forms of immersion in of toxic things things that aren't really making you feel more vibrant and alive and replacing them slowly over time and with consistency with things that are better for you. So my shift from this to this is ever evolving. I started to practice meditation. I started to practice yoga. And because of the way that yoga has transformed my ability to breathe, like abdominal breathing, which is something that I actively try and practice every day whenever I can, it's still something that I'm trying to habituate instead of breathing through the chest, breathing through the stomach, more fuller and more consciously. Over time, the way that yoga reworked my breath and the way it helped me to really relax more into my body as a form of recharging and resting, I found that over time, because I committed to that consistently and I made the choice, loving choice over and over again to say that I deserve to do this for my body. This is something that relaxes me. This is something that helps me feel more strong. This, has helped me, this helps me feel more connected to my breath and to myself. Over time, I was rewiring that sense of deservedness I was rewiring my, my sense of identity in a way from seeing myself as someone that was lazy, that was smoking, drinking, and not really doing much exercise to someone that was actually committing to something that felt very nourishing for me, that felt very re revitalizing for me. And now I'm actually considering doing a yoga teacher training course. That's something that's kind of been stewing in my mind. But that was something that, that was like my first jump into actually starting to do things consciously and actively and proactively that are self-loving. 
that are a reflection that I care about myself. And thing is, I invite you to do things that inherently reflect that you actually do care about yourself. A lot of these things that I talk about on my channel, they always come back to self-worth. They always come back to how much do you actually feel worthy of honouring yourself, of being kind to yourself. For example, if your friend comes up to you and says, oh, I'm really, really tired today. I don't really feel like doing anything today. And you just said to them, no, you have to work instead. Or no, you have to go out and do all these things instead. You can't go for a massage. Or you, don't, you can't afford a massage right now. Why, why do you want to do that? Then that's the kind of self-talk we've got to recognize in ourselves. Like it's only, it's only over this past year that I've recently really felt this shift in my sense of worthiness in terms of investing in myself, allowing myself to feel pleasure in investing in myself. Like for example, yesterday, I, I bought a perfume because I just, felt, I just felt like it. That was something that I really felt like that's what I wanted in that moment. It was allowing myself to participate, you know, in the more material aspect of, of beauty and of self-care. I really liked the smell of it. It was actually uh, lotus oil. So I thought that was very fitting because my, my tattoo is a lotus. And it smells really, really yummy. I wish you could smell it. One day they should develop, um, I've heard this somewhere else. This, this is not my idea, I'm not copying it. Um, but smell a vision. Smell a vision where you can smell scents through the screen. But we're not, we're not quite yet there. We're not quite there yet, folks. We're not quite there. But yesterday, yeah, I allowed myself to just do that. And that's, that for me in that moment was a form of self-care. It's allowing myself to feel like I deserve to invest in myself not withhold on things that on spending money on things that I would find pleasurable and allowing myself to feel more luxurious in, in a way because that's something that I've really been learning it's a form of investing in self because I feel worthy of it I feel worthy of for example beautifying myself like I don't know painting my nails getting a manicure or a pedicure which at one point in time that didn't resonate with me I didn't see that as a form of self-care because I wasn't that tapped into my femininity and I'm not saying that femininity is all about the external aesthetics of it but it is it can be a form of an internal reflection of how you feel inside so I was really I've been really allowing myself to explore that aspect of myself because that's something that I now find is quite rejuvenating for me that's a form of self-care for me you know painting my nails you know doing my hair, I like really doing my plaits and things, and just allowing myself to feel beautiful, I suppose. And that applies to, you know, whether you identify more as being masculine or feminine, it's really allowing yourself to feel beautiful and feel okay with doing that. And that's why self-care looks different to every single person, because you might not think that painting your nails or having a bath is very, it's a form of self-care. What do you like doing? That's why you have to pay very close attention to what you actually like doing. What brings you joy? Reading, writing, listening to music. That's something that I find very therapeutic because music has the ability to change your state quite quickly. So when I'm laying down, I'm listening to headphones, listening with my headphones, listening to techno if I feel like really recharging myself because that's something that really changes my state and makes me feel more energized or I'm listening to really soft and gentle, like melodic house, for example. That's something that I also find to be replenishing as well. And there's so many different things that are there for us to do on earth, so many different activities that are there for you that you can kind of use to build a, a repertoire of what you find to be very comforting and nurturing. And that's why time alone is really important. That's why meditation as well is at the, the tenet of all this. I feel like it kind of holds everything together. Because if you avoid self-care, it's probably because you, you don't really like spending time alone or you don't really feel worth investing in. You don't really feel worth you know, putting on that exercise video or that yoga video because you just can't be bothered to take care of yourself. And if that's you right now, just notice that. Where's that coming from? really decide that you're going to be someone that invests in their well-being. You invest in your vitality. Something else that I find to be a form of self-care is eating really fucking good food. Good, healthy, nutritious food. 
or something that like brightens me up and things that kind of cater towards the senses like being here right now and you know it's sunny and there's, there's lots of nice uh, plants everywhere like these you can't really see around me but these I'm just going to pluck one really quickly these are really beautiful uh, kind of flowers in a way but they're not very watery because obviously it's very desert vibes here um, so they don't hold a lot of water so they're kind of more like leaves but just look at the color being around that and being around colorful things and beautiful things and na natural things I find that to be really replenishing for me it's something that just brings me a lot of joy because it reminds me and connects me more to the beauty of this world it reminds me how beautiful this world is how amazing nature is, how intelligent life is, these life forms are. So I'd really just like you to get in touch with what is holding you back from really investing in yourself? Where can you start to make more time for things that are allowing you to recharge and rest, whether it's taking a nap, going for a massage, allowing yourself to do that, allowing yourself to invest in that, if that's what you feel like you need, or reading a book or meditating, putting on a meditation. I have a lot of meditations on my channel that you might enjoy. But what I was saying is that meditation, I feel, is the glue that holds it all together. Because if you're able to spend time alone in meditation, you're able to detach more from your thoughts. You're able to essentially more readily unplug from the, the mental chatterings that are going on inside your head. You'll, more, you'll be more easily able to drop into a state where you're comfortable being alone you're comfortable spending time alone and like you can just totally chill out relax sit in a chair doing nothing and actually enjoy it so that's what I really like doing right now and that's how I came up with the idea of this this topic I was sitting on the balcony covering myself up to uh, prevent the mosquitoes from sucking my blood and I was just sitting there looking at the moon because we actually haven't seen the moon once in Egypt apart from last night we were like there's the moon the moon is finally here we were like why is there no moon anywhere it was very weird and eerie but we eventually saw it um, but yeah I was just I was just watching the palm trees swaying looking at the sunsets watching the silhouette of the palm trees become more prominent as it kind of became more contrasting against the, the sky and I was just chilling I wasn't doing anything I was just really just thinking and processing and, and coming up with new ideas and that was a form of meditation for me it's a form of just being there being at one with where you are and with your environment and being okay with that and I feel like the more you're able to do that the more you're able to witness your mind and not be so engrossed in every little thought that comes to your head you'll be able to tap more into not only your intuition which will tell you what you you need that you're less guided and swayed by external influences of what you think you need like you might think you need to go on a massive shopping trip just to kind of have this kind of retail therapy in a way um, because we've been conditioned to believe that self-care is intrinsically linked to buying lots of stuff and consumerism but it's really being able to be at peace with yourself when you're spending time alone so that you can get clear on what you actually need and be more clear on who you are as a person, what you feel like you really desire in that moment, whether that's taking a rest or it's going for a run, doing something that energizes you, making music, painting. There's so many things, there's so many things. And so if you want to lean more into self-care, it's giving yourself permission to immerse yourself in these things, like totally immerse yourself in it. Like if you're going to relax if you're going to take a walk just totally immerse yourself in going for a walk don't think about start thinking about all the million other things that you need to do because you don't feel productive enough or because you feel like you're being lazy or that you don't have the time for this just totally immerse yourself in that take in the colors appreciate the beauty around you just appreciate that you're doing that for yourself it's an act of self-care it's an act of loving yourself, being kind to yourself. So yeah, I feel like going for a walk today. I'm gonna to go for a walk. 
oh yeah, I feel like doing some breath work today, so I'm gonna do that instead. And if you do this consistently, if you consistently honor your intuitive needs of what your body needs, or maybe what your mind needs, like maybe you need to go, go off and have some alone time and just think about your ideas or have some sort of intellectual stimulation by listening to a documentary or um, uh, a, a course that you're doing. Because that's also something that I find to be a form of self-care is allowing myself to, to learn and being part of courses that help me to spiritually expand. But if you do this consistently, you're going to lessen the probability of regressing back into more destructive self, not, not, not self-care habits, but um, self-destructive habits. And you will eventually kind of start leaning more towards what feels light and what feels good so that these things are less important. You feel less of a need and an impulse to go towards these things. That's really how I quit smoking. Because when I finally was investing in myself so much that my, my frequency was raising. I felt happier in general. I felt lighter in general. So I just felt less of a need and less of a pull, addictive pull, to have a cigarette, for example. To go towards something that I know is going to be more of a depletion of my body rather than something that elevates me. So constantly, if you keep making the choice to do things that are recharging you, resting you, replenishing you, and you commit to that because you are committed to yourself, you're committed to loving who you are, you want the best for yourself, essentially, then over time, you will anchor in and wire in things that are actually more elevating for you. And naturally, your frequency will increase from then on. That's why I continued with yoga. That's why I, I kept on saying to myself, you know, this is something that I want to do consistently because I know that this makes me feel good. I, I have my best interests at heart. Because sometimes in the beginning, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to click on that video of doing a yoga practice. But then when I'd start doing it, I'd feel so good. By the end, I'd just feel like I'm so fucking glad that I did that for myself. So really it's a question of, do you have your best interests at heart? Do you have your body's best interests at heart? Are you really listening and honoring yourself? And when you know that you have your best interests at heart, because that's a reflection that you actually love who you are, just as much as you would love your friend, that's when you can really anchor in these things that feel good, these things that feel light. So that's like the first, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling bleh or I'm feeling not great, that's one of the first things that I will, that I will want to do is go, like, go for a walk or just allow myself to creatively think of ideas or immerse myself in a place that I find to be very beautiful. Because I find sensory, sensory simulation something that I find very enlivening. Like being in a new place, that's why I like to travel, exploring, just being around a new environment, that enlivens me because you know, I'm seeing new things. It's very, I like novel experiences. For you, for example, you might enjoy just really being wrapped up in a blanket at home and being comfortable just in your own privacy. That might be your form of self-care. So, Create and cultivate that intimacy with yourself so that you know what you need. And right now in the comments, I'd like you to let me know what is it that you need right now? Not from other people, but what do you need from yourself? Maybe you need to journal to really release something that you've just been so tightly holding on to this week. Maybe you need to go into a forest go into a secluded area and scream as a form of a throat chakra release, which is something that I um, ask my client to practice. There's lots of different things that you could be doing right now that are a reflection that you actually are worth taking care of. So my final message for today is to have your best interests at heart. Try and see yourself as if you see your best friend or someone that you love and care for very deeply. Be interested in what you need. Be interested in knowing what that is, what that feels like, what that looks like to you right now. Whether that's dancing, going for a run, you know, there's so many things. So many things. And it's not gonna look like it looks like to other people. It might be a unique form of, that, that comes to you only. 
And that's why it's important to just allow yourself to be who you are. And no judgment for that. Like for example, as part of my creativity, I genuinely find uh, creating content for my OnlyFans something that is very re recharging for me. It allows me to express myself more. I have fun when I'm doing it. I feel good after I've done it. So in that sense, that's something that for me, I personally find is a essentially like a form of self-care because it's allowing me to delve deeper and expand my creativity and my sensual self. To someone else, they might think that's not a form of self-care, but it's about listening to yourself, honoring what you need. I saw on Instagram this girl that said, you know, like for example, twerking for her, dancing, shaking her booty, is a form of self-care for her. It's something that she finds to be like a spiritual practice because it helps her to unleash that more wild and raw part of herself. So if you just allow yourself to do whatever you feel like doing, whatever you feel like you need, whatever feels good for you, ultimately, that's going to lead you to fill up your own love tank. And that's what this is all about, really. It's filling up your own cup because you have your own best interests at heart. So I'd like you to let me know in the comments what is something that you feel like you need to do and claim it and state it so that you actually act on it. You actually do that for yourself. It's like a gift to yourself and constantly be giving yourself gifts. And I'm not talking about material gifts. Like yesterday, the perfume that I bought, that was like a material gift to myself because I wanted to. But I'm talking about like an energetic gift. Giving yourself time being com compassionate with yourself. So all in all, it's time to fill up your own love cup. Allow yourself to be so swelled with joy for the life that you live because you're connected to your internal world and that then starts to leak out and pour into the world around you as well. And a big facet of that is self-care and self-soothing being able to just remedy your own feelings because when you are doing things that actually enrich you, that are enlivening you, that are helping you to recharge and rest or rejuvenate, that is when you will more readily be able to tend to your feelings. You'll be really present with yourself. And if you're present with yourself, you're more able to be the observer in your life as well. And that's super important. Being able to observe your own reactions to things. Being able to observe how your old conditioned patterns play out. And as you increase in that awareness, because you're more internally connected to yourself and who you are, that's when you can go more towards a life of self-mastery, which is essentially what I'm working on right now. And I feel like anyone on the spiritual journey, that's what we're all working towards is a form of Self-mastery. Self-mastery. Being the master of our own internal world. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to wrap it up here. I really appreciate you growing alongside me, growing the garden of our lives together. Spread some good fertilizer in the comments. Just letting me know what you thought, how you're feeling, and just good vibes all around. Um, I'm going to close it out with a few breaths with you. We just like to take a deep breath in through the nose. Long breath out through the mouth. A deep breath in through the nose. Long breath out through the mouth. And on this last one, really feel your inhale. Hold at the top. And exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> Let something go. Thank you for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I will see you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.